Hello and welcome back. First of all, I would like to thank you for supporting me in doing this good job. If you like my videos and find them helpful, then please share them with your friends as well. And once again, thank you for watching it. So far, we have seen messages 1, 2, 3 and 4 of Ike Exchange. Today we are going to see what happens in message 5. Initiator sends the first message of the communication and responder sends the second one. Initiator then sends the third packet and responder sends the fourth packet. So I've seen all these four messages. If you haven't already, then you can go back to my previous videos and go through them. Now today we're going to talk about what information is shared in message 5. Before the initiator sends message 5, it has to do some preparation for it. I'm just gonna get rid of this diagram. So before sending message 5 or message 6, both ends, they generate, they calculate something called as Defi Hellman shared secret. Initiator sent the first packet, responder sent the second one, initiator then sends the third packet and responder sends fourth message. So in these four packets, they've exchanged a lot of things, similar kind of parameters negotiated. So let's see what are those parameters that we have already shared and we are gonna use some of them. So we have shared phase 1 policies in which uh, we have uh, encryption so let's say AES and uh, SHA hashing, Jeffy Hellman group, cookies, initiator nonce and responder nonce. So how is this Jeffy Hellman shared secret is calculated? So in third message we send Jeffy Hellman public key right so both sides, both peers, they generate a Defi Hellman public key and private key. So let's say A is the private key and XA is public key. Similarly, B is private key and XB is public key. Initiator sends its own public key to the responder and in the fourth packet, responder sends its public key to initiator. So once these four messages have been exchanged, now both of them, they have public key of each other. So even now initiator after receiving the fourth packet, initiator also gets the public key of responder. And responder also gets public key of initiator. So initiator has private key of itself, public key of itself and public key of responder. Similarly, the responder has its own private and public key and it has initiator's public key. Both sides, they generate their Defi Hellman shared secret. So this Defi Hellman shared secret on initiator end, it is public key of responder, private key of initiator, mod B. And on the responder side, I'm just gonna use a different color here, X, A, B, mod B. And these two values, they end up being same. So on both sides, they have independently generated Jeffy Hellman shared secret, and that turned out to be same. In third and fourth packet, we shared Jeffy Hellman public keys to each other. Now using them, we are generating a Defi Hellman shared secret. So now we have Defi Hellman shared secret, GAB Defi Hellman shared secret turns out to be XBA mod P is equal to XAB mod P. After they have generated, they have calculated the Defi Hellman shared secret. Now they will generate session keys. Three session keys are generated, session key ID D, S key ID A and session key ID E. These three session keys are generated using Defi Hellman shared secret and some more information of course. So we'll see how these keys are generated one by one and what is their importance, what do they do. So first of all, to generate session key ID D, it generates a session key ID, S key ID. And the formula it uses is a pseudo random function of pre-shared key initiator nonce and responder nonce. It's a pseudo random function of pre-shared key, initiator nonce and responder nonce. Initiator nonce and responder nonce, they, both the parties have, right? Because it was negotiated in third message. Initiator nonce and responder sent responder nonce, right? And now they both got both, both the nonce with each other. So he also got responder nonce here and this guy got initiator nonce because it was sent by the initiator. So this moment, both of them, they have same information. That's why they are going to generate keys. Those keys will turn out to be same on both ends. So before generating session key, we generated Defi Hellman shared secret. Now it has created a session key ID, which is generated using a pseudo random function of pre-shared key, initiator nonce and responder nonce. Using this session key ID, now it generates its first session key, which is session key D. This 
session key ID D is just used to you know calculate subsequent IPsec keying material just to generate other keys. So making things complex. First we generated a Defi Hellman shared secret. Then we created a session key ID using pre-shared key, initiator nonce and responder nonce. Right? Both these sites they already have pre-shared key configured. Right? Pre-shared key has to be same on both sites. So that's why this session key ID will turn out to be same. We can even take an example. Let's say initiator nonce was one and responder nonce was two. So both sites they have initiator nonce as one and responder nonce as two. And let's say pre-shared key was three. When initiator site generates the S key ID, pre-shared key is three, initiator nonce is one, responder nonce is two, right? When the responder site will generate, it will also use the same, same things, right? Because pre-shared key has to be same on both sides. So it uses 3, 1, 2 and the session key ID will turn out to be same. And they are they are calculating them in independently. Right? So there is no sharing of these things. They are doing this calculation on their own. So no one over the internet can figure out what they are doing, what calculation they have done, what keys they have generated. So session key ID D, it is used to calculate subsequent keying material to generate further keys. The way this key ID session key ID D is generated. It's a kind of similar. So it's a pseudo random function again of session key ID the one that we just created this one here Teffy Hellman shared secret which we denoted with GAB initiator cookie which was sent in first packet responder cookie which was sent in second packet by the responder and a number zero so This is how session key ID D is generated Using this session key ID D, it creates session key ID A. This session key ID A is used to provide data integrity and authentication to Ike messages. To generate session key ID A, it uses a pseudo random function of S key ID, then session key ID D, Diffie Hellman shared secret, initiator cookie, responder cookie, and number one. And then using session key ID A, it generates session key ID E pseudo random function of s key id session key id a diffie hellman shared secret initiator cookie responder cookie number two so still we haven't sent message five but we have calculated diffie hellman shared secret then using diffie hellman shared secret we have created three session keys session key id d a and e d is used to generate keying material subsequent keys and a is for data integrity and authentication of ike messages and then finally session key e this is the key that is used to you know uh, the encrypt Ike messages so so far we have seen messages 1 2 3 and 4 they were all unencrypted no part of these messages was encrypted and in these four messages also there was no secret information like we still haven't shared pre-shared key still haven't shared the identity of the peer so the secret information that can you know lead to attacks over the internet that has not been shared yet now we're going to we have to match we have to make sure that the pre-shared key is same on both ends right and pre-shared key is a crucial information that both the peer hold to compare the pre-shared key we have to send something over the internet to avoid the risk of getting it hacked this message should be encrypted the pre-shared key should not be in clear text so using session key e it encrypts messages 5 and 6 so it does not completely encrypt the messages 5 and 6 and it encrypts just the content of messages 5 and 6 once we have these keys we'll see what what information is shared in message 5 so sending message 5 in message 5 initiator sends two payloads one is identity payload the second is hash payload in identity payload the initiator shares its own identity Let's say initiator and responder initiator's ip address on outside interface is 1.1.1 and responder's ip address is 2.2.2 so in this identity payload initiator sends its ip address its identity 1.1.1 and in the hash payload it sends hash of pre-shared key so we never share pre-shared key in any message if we have to then we share hash of pre-shared key it's not the re actual pre-shared key it's hash value of pre-shared key so we've already taken some uh, precautions that pre-shared key should not be shared over the internet so we are sending hash of the pre-shared key and to top it we now are going to encrypt these two payloads so these two payloads will be encrypted using session key id e so if i open this message 5 in wireshark you will not see anything there payloads will be completely encrypted so let's get to the wireshark capture okay so these are the six messages of phase one and this is phase two quick mode phase one is known at main mode 
so far we have seen these four messages I'm going to open message number five and we'll see and if I open the UDP there's nothing if I open ISECM no information it just says encrypted data 64 bytes if you do the same thing with message 4 there is a lot more information available here like initiator SPI responder SPI of course these SPIs are kept in the header they're not you know the payload of the data the SPIs are in the header of packet but actual if you look at the key exchange in third and fourth packet uh, defi element public key and non payload so defi element public key is in the key exchange payload this is the defi element public key and it also sends the non payload everything is visible in up to fourth packet but if you go to the fifth one then it says encrypted data only so there is nothing visible except spis in this encrypted data it sends two payloads identity payload and hash payload in identity payload it sends the identity of itself identity means the interface on which crypto map has been enabled so the IP address of that interface goes into the identity payload and hash payload contains hash of pre-shared key then these two payloads are encrypted using session key IDE so same thing you can see in message number six again encrypted data because message six also contains the same thing it the responder it generates its own uh, Tiffy Hellman uh, shared secret then using defi element shared secret it generates session keys using session key e it finally encrypts the data and sends it to the initiator so because there is not much difference in message 5 and 6 the data that is sent in message 5 and 6 so i'm concluding both of them in one video here so once the initiator sends message 5 in message 5 it again sends the identity payload and hash payload so hash payload contains the hash of pre-shared key and identity payload contains identity of the initiator once it sends this to the responder responder verifies the identity of uh, of the initiator with the configured identity here so on responder it will have a tunnel group configured right so using that tunnel group tunnel group will be named as the ip address of the initiator let's say 1.1.1.1 it opens identity payload first of all it decrypts that it has to decrypt that right because these two payloads are encrypted so how does it decrypt to decrypt it it has to have the key that the key that was used to encrypt it the responder should have that key so like i mentioned that before sending fifth and sixth packet both initiator and responder they create session keys three session keys are generated session key d a and e and then using e these payloads are encrypted when initiator was doing this responder was also doing the same thing it also created three session keys d a and e and because they used all same parameters same mechanisms this session key e on both ends will have to turn out to be the same so that's why this the key that was used to generate uh, you know the key that was used to encrypt these payloads same key will be used to decrypt here but these keys are never shared between initiator and responder they have calculated them independently and yet they are same so that's the beauty of this negotiation we started with s metric in first packet when we shared diffie hellman diffie hellman is an s metric algorithm it creates two keys public key and private key and using those two keys we finally main uh, you know we finally generated one key which is session key and turns out to be a symmetric encryption now before i go any further i will request you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you have already subscribed then i would like to thank you for that if you wish to get an instant notification when i post a new video please do subscribe to my channel with that being said let's move on okay so when the responder receives fifth packet it uh, it decrypts the data and finds out what is the identity in the identity payload the initiator has put his IP address it matches the identity if it matches the identity with the tunnel group then responder says okay you are who you say you are and then the hash payload it opens the hash payload and finds that you have sent the hash of the pre-shared key responder now picks up the pre-shared key from its own tunnel group and calculates the hash it matches the hash of the pre-shared key if hash matches that means the pre-shared key is same so it also verifies the pre-shared key once both the verifications are done uh, the responder just says okay and sends the six message of the communication so that's all in the six packet exchange how is the hash of pre-shared key generated and what does it actually contain so hash of psk it does not only contain the pre-shared key it also have some other parameters so hash of pre-shared key is generated using a 
pseudo random function of session key id skid initiator cookie responder cookie pre shared key sa payloads proposals in transforms transform id so these are the things that are used while generating the hash of the the hash payload so it's actually hash payload initiator responder after sending first packet initiator went into a state mm wait message 2 that means i have sent the first packet of the communication and now i'm waiting for message 2 to be received after sending second message the responder goes into a state mm wait message 3 that means i've sent the second packet i'm waiting for third packet initiator then sends message 3 and goes to a state mm wait message 4 Responder sends message 4, goes to a state mm wait message 5. When after initiator is done sending message 5, it goes into a state mm wait message 6. And there is no mm wait message 7 because if responder is done sending message 6, it's not expecting any more messages. So these are the mm wait stages. The next video will be about these mm wait stages. What do they mean? How do we figure out what is the problem if we see any mm wait state and how can we troubleshoot it? If you wish to get an instant notification when I post a new video, please do subscribe to the channel.